we just come around your word, I ask, Lord, that um, as we share around it, that it brings to the surface things that are in our own lives that, as Mark said, you know, we're in these days of awe, Lord, that we begin to look um, at ourselves and our relationship with you and if there's any barriers between um, us and you, Lord, that you would just highlight those so that we can come into a deeper place with you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I was going to talk about, share about the new year and I haven't finished doing it enough study to talk about the numbers of the new year and um, and there's a lot online at the moment about that so but one of the things that really hit my heart was the story of Jesus so you're gonna have to wait for that all right <laughs> so so I want to take a story that's told about Jesus and it's about where he calms a storm but I want to hopefully bring something out of that as well um, and it's in uh, the book of Mark and there, it's in other uh, Gospels as well, in Matthew and Luke. But I'm going to look at Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. And I'm going to read it. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was. I don't know what that really means, but just as he was. In other words, in whatever <laughs> he was doing, he didn't go home and change, in other words. And in the boat. So there were other boats with him. And a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped and Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. And disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? No, not really. No. <laughs> you can imagine the scene if you've got your imagination going. Um, he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And that word completely calm, it means like dead calm. And if you've ever been out on a paddleboard, you like it when it's dead calm and it's crystal clear. It's like an amazing experience. He said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And so they weren't terrified now about the storm, but they were terrified about Jesus and what he had done. And so it's interesting that they were so terrified first about the storm. They were seasoned fishermen and there's often, you know, storms on the Sea of Galilee um, and they'd come across large storms before. So this must have been pretty big. And it's really interesting that Jesus, you could see Jesus' humanity here too because he, he took time to sleep and refresh. He'd been talking to the crowds and he was obviously tired and um he just got into the boat and I think he probably knew the storm was coming. I'm sure he did. But he didn't worry about it. He just went to sleep. And the looming waves that threatened, he didn't worry about them at all. And so part of it I want to just highlight today is about the, the storm that came and that the waves broke over the boat and that they were nearly swamped. And all the while Jesus was in the stern in the back of the boat asleep on a cushion don't know and so can you imagine this the boat's being swamped and what are the disciples are doing I can imagine it doesn't actually say in the text but they were probably running around trying to do whatever empty water out of the boat fix something do something they were doing things and the disciples had more fear about the storm than trusting in God and so they were trying to do all this meaningful work to rescue themselves but in the meantime Jesus was asleep and Jesus knew that uh, they would survive um, the storm. And so he knew that they would eventually fulfill their purpose. And um, so that he just slept through. And I began to look at this as an analogy of life, really. All of us in this room go through storms. And it's really how you respond to that storm. You know, often we say, God is punishing us. Well, why is he doing it? All these sort of things. And then I think, you know, what do I do in the storm? Am I like the disciples in the storm? Do I run around trying to do things, fix things? We're naturally people that like to rescue um, and do stuff, make things, control things. When we're in storms, what do we do? We like to control things. A storm is something that you're going through that really takes your life over. And the example in that story is that the waves were so overwhelming. So they came in the boat. All this was going on, they were going through storms 
and that, that particular storm, but for us it can be an internal storm or an external storm. And all the while, they're probably making all this noise, but Jesus was still asleep. <laughs> so sometimes when we're in storms, there's circumstances beyond our control. So storms can rattle us. But one thing I've learned through the storms of life that I've been is how to actually rest in those storms. And, and that's a really hard thing to do because if, you know, we talk about being like Jesus in the midst of all that we are and all that we do. And if I look at this story, what Jesus did was he was asleep in the storm and he took rest in the middle of the storm. And so my query is, you know, what do we do when we're in the storm? So often God permits things and he'll deliver us from them as well, but he permits the storms to come and, so, and we might not even feel or touch God or see him in the storm, but he's actually there asleep. And sometimes we can't even hear him talk, talking to, to us as well. And that they had this overwhelming sense of danger and being perished. And isn't that like it when we're in a storm of life? Um, and I think the biggest thing for me is having peace in the centre of that storm. When trials come, we have to trust the sovereignty of God in that situation and grow in trust and confidence. Jesus has power over everything. And in this situation, they'd seen him, they'd see some of the power of God demonstrate, but they still panicked. And, and Jesus was fine about it all. And so when we look at the troubles that we go through, it's actually coming back and seeing it from God's perspective. And often God is okay with it, that you're going through a storm. In fact, he is. And it's rather than panicking and reacting to it, but it's actually being like Jesus within the storm, is finding that rest with God in the middle of the storm. He is in control of everything. But it's easy to forget that, totally easy to forget. And how do I come out of the storm? Spurgeon actually said, the same sun that melts the wax also hardens the clay. And often that's our experiences within the, stone, in the storms. And I suppose for me... It's how do I find that rest and that place of contentment, even though all around me there is turmoil going on. And it's actually coming to a place of really believing and sitting in God's presence. You know, some of the things that this morning in worship, it was really about that face-to-face -face contact with him. And it's, it actually says in Romans, doesn't it, that we know that in all things, in everything, whether in good or bad, that God works them to the together for good for those who love him, who have been accord, called according to his purpose. But sometimes it's hard to grasp on, onto that when we're in the middle of that storm. And so for me, it's coming to that place of presence. So knowing that God is in the midst of that storm, in the presence, you know, and you're in his presence in the midst of that storm. Because often it's out of your control that you cannot do anything, just like those disciples. And they cried out to God, and I'm sure Jesus was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm having this terrific sleep, and now you're going to wake me up, <laughs> you know, just because of a silly storm. And yes, the waves are overcoming, you know, and it's actually getting resting back into the presence of God, sitting back into the presence of God. And no, no the tur turmoil was all about you. It's having that knowingness and that understanding that God is truly in control. And I think we know all the scriptures. It's like that one out of Jeremiah 29. I know the plans I have for you, God says. Um, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But it's finding that presence in the midst of the storm and practicing his presence in the storm. We constantly need to remind ourselves of this in the storm. And there's another storm that Paul went through in Acts 27. And this is what Paul said in the midst of that storm. He said, Last night, an angel of the Lord to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid. And this morning, I suppose, I just wanted to encourage you that the Lord you serve, the one that you belong to, is in the midst of a storm with you, no matter what you're sensing or feeling. And it's coming to that place within his presence to be able to rest in his presence, to know that you belong to him and that he stands with you in the midst of the storm. And he's actually saying to your heart, do not be afraid, because there's purpose behind it, there's fulfillment behind it, there's destiny behind it. And this morning, just be encouraged that 
no matter what you're going through, that he is in the midst of, your storm, of the storm. And it's to become face to face with God. And it's in that presence, in that place of presence, that really we can be disconnected in a sense from the storm. As we live within his presence, we can see the outcome um, come to fruition as it comes forth. So to whom do I belong? Paul said, I belong to God. And this morning, whatever you're going through, I just want to encourage you, whatever storm that hits you, whether it's internal or whether it's external, that it's actually sitting in the presence of God, resting in his presence. And all this is happening around you. And it's actually saying, God, you are in control, even though I don't understand what's going on. I don't know the outcome of how whatever's going to happen, but I know that I belong to you and that I serve you and that you are sovereign and that you are in control. So, Father God, we thank you this morning that in the midst of the storm that we can rest in your presence. Even this morning, Father, as we began to worship you, we were resting in your presence and there was that refreshing and infilling. But not only that, Father, whatever is going on around us, we began to see you face to face. Father, as we set our eyes and fixed our eyes upon you, Lord, the presence even became thicker and thicker and thicker. Rosie, if you want to come up. And Lord, we just thank you this morning. We desire to come deeper and deeper into your presence, to see you face to face, Lord, to see you in that place, Lord. So we say, come today, Father. Come, Lord, come. Oh, Lord, just ask him to come this morning. Whatever you're going through, just ask him to come. And though everything's raging around us, Lord God, we want to be still in your presence. And just invite him to come, asking for a cushion to be able to sit in the middle of the storm or lay your head while the storm is raging. Thank you, Father. More of you. And your storm might be just uniquely your storm. It is generally, isn't it? Just allow him to come in and rest in his presence. Don't try and work it out. Don't try and, you know, have solutions or do things, you know, do things. We start getting busy. But really, it's the rest and letting go. You know, sometimes we just like to control things and we just need to let go because there's no answer within it. So, Father, this morning we just let go. We let go and allow your presence, Father, to overcome us, Lord. Hmm. Let him flow through you this morning. Let him flow through you. Let him bring that encouragement. So I will be still And I will be still Waiting for you to carry me through And I will be still in your presence, Lord, and I will be still.
let go, Father. We let go. Let your presence come. Holy Spirit.